Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, we have come together to do the Mula Nakshatra video. I know Eve is missing because she has some stuff that she has to take care of. She won't be able to make it, but she will be able to either definitely will make it to the next Nakshatra or I might actually add her side of the Nakshatra if she gets the time. But today, we're going to be discussing uh, the Mula Nakshatra and the essence of Mula Nakshatra. So let's start out with the uh, <laughs> okay, guys. I guess. This is uh, fascinating that you said let's do this video, and it's been more than six months. Yes. <laughs> and we said probably this video will happen when Jupiter then will come into Mula. <laughs> Jupiter has already come into Mula, has gone back, and is ready. Gone back. It's like get it over with it, guys. Jeez. <laughs> So, yeah, I think Mula is, um, you know, I think Aditya will take over, but let me just give you the basics of uh, Mula and then I will talk more about Mula. Mula again means the root or the origin. It also means the source. Uh, it's the basis or the center. Okay. Now, this Nakshatra was called as the foundation star because the symbology of this nakshatra is a bunch of uh, reticulated roots or a bunch of roots tied together. <clears throat> and another symbology of this uh, nakshatra is the elephant's gourd. Or it's what is the elephant's gourd? It, uh, if you actually have any of you seen the elephant's gourd? Is that his poop? No, oh, elephant's no. gourd is uh, like a, it's called Ankush. Oh. In, Okay. Uh -huh. It's called Ankush in, um, you know, in Hindi and Sanskrit. Ankush means, if you look at the Ankush, if you have an image, Aditya, maybe you can show it when you're doing your presentation. Yeah, yeah. It just looks like Saturn. Okay. And what is the elephant's good is the Mahut. Mahut is the one who sits on the elephant and he is the rider of the elephant. And he has this weapon, which is a sharp object. And it looks like the symbol of Saturn. Okay, so what it what he does is whenever the elephant is not able to, uh, he cannot handle the elephant. He pierces this into his, the ears of the elephant, and the elephant is in so much of pain that it, then it comes on track. So Ankush is used to control the elephant. So similarly, yeah, this is an Ankush. So if you really see, it looks like a, um, you know, this is Saturn. there you are. Yeah, it's like a Saturn. Saturn is <coughs> inverted by 90 degrees. True. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's very, it's, it's very painful for the elephant. <laughs> I know. Saturn is... This looks like a BDSM toy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I think we should start recording this again, couple. I, I, I don't think we should, we should go live. We should start again. <laughs> well, actually, it's good, you know. It's uh, something at work. I think 10,000 cuts from Mula is actually Asta. So, you know, it's expected to happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do, yeah, Dr. Pai, why don't you go ahead then? Uh, you were saying about the oh yes. word and stuff. Yeah. So, you know, this nakshatra, again, you know, why the symbology is important is, see, one is the, the reticulated roots that we're talking about. It, it probably, you know, when you look at it, it represents your DNA. Your DNA is tied together, like the roots, you know. So it shows you the basis. And let us not forget that, um, I think, zero degrees to 10 degrees, I feel, is the Mula Trikona of Jupiter from Sagittarius, zero degrees to 10 degrees is a Mula Trikona. It's the head office mm -hmm. and he's called a Jeep Karaka, Jupiter. <coughs> so then, you know, the journey begins. So I see a very strong correlation with Mula and also with genetics and genes. Um, and surprisingly, many people in India, it's uh, this Nakshatra has got a bad reputation here in India, especially for Women, they say if you're born in a mula, then it's bad for um, 
your uh, father-in-law. Yes, yes, I heard that. Yes. One with the moon. I have not seen any of this in my research, uh, but there is a reason, you know, why probably they would, they would say this because it falls in the natural ninth house and it's a Gandanta, around the Gandanta. So, for example, if moon is in gesture for a lady, they say here in India, it is bad for the elder brother of the husband. If it falls in Ashlesha, they say it's bad for the, the mother-in-law. Okay, although I have not seen any, um, you know, uh, concrete things okay. to support that. But that is very much, if some woman here in India has a moon in Moola, you know, uh, it's a problem for her because, you know, many people would reject the, uh, the horoscope thinking it's bad for the father-in-law or many horoscopes where the father-in-law is no longer there you know they they would accept that so i've seen this um but i think it's just uh i've not seen in in my own research i have not seen this work right but it's something to do with the i think the ankush as well you know <clears throat> um so Moolah is all about going to your origin, to your roots. I've seen many people who are interested in living around places where they were closer to Mother Earth when they were younger, maybe. Like in fields or, you know, um, maybe very close to um, farming, agriculture, or being close to a forest area. Mula can give you that. And Mula is also I have to say Moola is the most closed part of the house. It's a southwest region, which is controlled by um, Rahu, but it's also called as, there's a, there's a deity called uh, Nairuti. Nairuti rules that region. Now, there are two variations of Nairuti also what I've seen is one is the male Nairuti, which is the directional god, which is uh, amongst the Dasha Dikpalas. Rules that. Then there is a female deity called Nairuti, uh, the goddess of uh, you know destruction, calamities, and death. Okay, uh, but that is the area that has to be the closed, and it has, to, and that's why southwest region is where they say you have to cover it with very high walls, or should be very so the energy stays there. So southwest region of the house is where they say you know the Rahus. And your master bedroom has to come there and you have to fortify the southwest corner of your house with high walls as per Vasku. So Mula is that region. What you are mentioning Nairutya, even Nairutya means southwest actually. Southwest. Yeah. Nairutya, Nairutya means southwest. Yeah. So in connection with Mula with Southwest. Somewhere, yes. I have seen this. The southwest region and um, and the Shakti of this nature is burn. Burn means to ruin, destroy, break things apart. Now there are two ways of looking at that. One is inquisitiveness. I have seen children with burn um, um, mula nakshatra. They like to tear things apart. Like you give them a doll or give them a toy. They are so inquisitive. They they play around with it and then they want to dismantle it. They want to see what is inside. Because that's the way they study. They are inquisitive. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing of this is somehow this thing is also connected to progeny. Finding the root of the progeny. That's what the desire of this lecture is. So now, what does it mean? If you, I think uh, Aditya will be able to explain that when he talks about the astronomy part of Mula, it is the center point from where all the stars have been taking birth in our galaxy. The galactic center is where from all everything is taking birth. So Mula is also, I've seen, even though it's a Tikshna nakshatra, Tikshna means it's a sharp and a dreadful nakshatra, or it's also called as a Dharuna nakshatra, which is about tragic. And Mula is also Adhomukha. Adhomukha means facing downwards. Now, this is one of the theories that I've given uh, when you look at the Gandanta. Why this Gandanta? is very very significant and today this Gandanta is where you know um, Jupiter will be transiting uh, through this and I've already seen a lot of um, things coming on you know um, what is it 
uh, Aditya, we talked about we had photographs of this this uh, the black hole, right? I have that actually. I'm going to talk about that. Okay, so that again is coming up now. It's because of the Mula effect which is coming in, and this Gandanta is very very significant. Now everybody talks about Gandanta. It's fire, water, and all of that. But what I observe from a nakshatra perspective is it's very key. Why? When you look at the Gandanta, nobody talks about the Gandanta of uh, between Pisces and Aries, which is Revati and Ashwini Nakshatra. Nobody talks about that Gandanta. It's called Swa Gandanta or Self Gandanta because it's the first house. And what happens there is Revati is a forward looking Nakshatra. Okay. And Ashwini Nakshatra is also a forward looking Nakshatra, which is facing forward. It's like moving forward. Now imagine if moon is moving through one nakshatra and transiting into another nakshatra, what happens? How would the moon feel? So it is moving through Revati, it's level, and it moves forward, it's Ashwini. So there's not much of a variation it will feel. Okay. When we go to the next Gandanta, which is Ash Ashlesha and Magha, both of them are facing downwards. Adhomuka. Ashlesha is facing downwards. And Magha is facing downwards. So the imagine the moon is like in a flow. It is facing downwards. It is like a waterfall, and it is falling through Ashlesha. So and from Ashlesha to Magha, still the transition is not very bad for the moon to feel like. Hmm. But when it comes to Jesta and Mula, it's a different phenomenon. What happens is uh, Jesta is a forward-looking nakshatra. So the moon is you know traveling, and suddenly when it comes to Mula. It is falling down because Adomuka. It has to face downwards. So it is like a waterfall suddenly. So that's why people will feel the intensity more during in this uh, zone. Again, this is not an explanation given in any of the texts. This is my own interpretation uh -huh. where I, the intensity is more because of how the moon will feel. Moon is the mind, isn't it? So how would the moon feel when it is transiting from each nakshatra? So this. You know, what is the face of the nakshatra will give you some clue of how the moon is going to transit between one nakshatra and another nakshatra. It's like you're driving on a car and imagine if there is, a, you know, a big um, hump and you have to go over a speed, a speed breaker. So you have to, you know, the speed breaker is going to stop. That's exactly how it feels as though you're just gliding and suddenly you have to then free fall. So anyway, I think um, I will talk more about uh, Mula, but these are some of the things I've seen. People are interested in the family tree, family lineage, where I have prominent planets in Mula Nakshatra. Maga is the same way too, right? Uh, lineage yeah. and DNA. And... See, if you really look at it, Kapil, you have to look at it from all the three Ketu Mula Nakshatra, yeah. which is Maga, yeah. Mula, and Ashwini. Yeah. Ashwini is the gen. Uh, Ashwini is more like. Okay, this is how you can really think about it, right? Um, again, my interpretation. Ashwini is like the, the sperms. Ketu is the thin, long thing. It's like a sperm, which is in a in a race to get to the yes. to the place. You know that. Yeah. So it is about the quickness. It's about you know there are many you know many sperms wanting to reach to the same destination to the home home, mm -hmm. and who gets there quickly? But it's only one sperm which is successful in reaching its final destination, isn't it? So there are millions of ones running behind and it's like the speed. So that Ashwini Nakshatra is this horse power, it's the power to reach to a destination as quickly as to Shidra Vyapani Shakti. And when you come to the next Ketu, it is more about now it has merged with the, the, the ovum, now it's the DNA, like the Pitris, the ancestral work of the mother. Because it depends on the quality of the sperm, quality of the sperm of what it is, you know, fertilizing. So that is that. And then the mula is the birth. That's why I say it's the progeny, it's the desire, it's the root of the progeny. That's it, that's when the, you know, um, it starts. Whatever I don't know what is the biological term, and the sperm and the ovum have come together, and then conceive. yeah, yeah, conceive. Yeah, exactly. That's where the conce conception happens in the womb. So if you really look at the Mula, Mula is like the womb of the mother. It's closed from all angles. You're closed. Nairuti, you're closed. 
You're sitting in the womb. So that is where the genesis is. That's why it's Jiva Karaka, where the Jiva has entered. That's the conception is happening, Jiva. That's why it's Jupiter. And very surprisingly, I've also said, if you look at, if you make Mula as um, the Lagna, okay, it is the Mula Trikona of Jupiter. Yeah. Okay. The third house from it, Aquarius, is the Mula Trikona of Saturn. Mm -hmm. Okay. The sixth house from it is the Mula Trikona, which is Taurus is the Mula Trikona of Moon. The ninth house from Sagittarius, which is Mula, which is Jiva Karaka, is the Mula Trikona of Sun. Mm -hmm. Tenth house is the Mula Trikona of Mercury, which is Virgo from Sagittarius. And the 11th house is the Mula Trikona of Venus. Now, let us not forget that these are your Upachaya houses. Upachaya, 3, 6, 10, 11. So, Mula Trikona of Saturn, third house. Mula Trikona of Moon, sixth house. Mula Trikona of Sun, ninth house. Mula Trikona of, you know, 10th house and 11th house. Three, six, sun won't be considered the Upachaya though in this. Yeah, sun is not the Upachaya. Yeah. Yeah. Sun is not the Upachaya, but I'm just saying that's 159 concept. Yeah. See, 159 is fifth house, Aries is the Mula Trikona of Mars. Mars, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Multicon of Mars is fifth, which is Deha Karaka, which is the Deha means the body, right? And Atma Karaka, the ninth house, Sun. Jiva Karaka, first house, Jupiter. Now, when you see the Opachaya houses, it's nothing but the third house is the neck, where you can actually move. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where, this, this part grows. Sixth house is the hips, that is where it grows. The natural sixth house is Virgo. So, it's a Upachaya. It's a Dushthana, also Upachaya, growth house, okay? Tenth house is the knees. The natural tenth house is Capricorn. And the eleventh house is the ankles. These are the places of the body where the growth happens. After you, you know, these are the only parts of the body which grow. That's why you have, you, know, you have a certain height is because of this parts of the third house, sixth house, tenth house, eleventh house. These are the growth houses because they are all connected to your body parts. Third so house. what you're saying is that Mula is connected with growth in a way. Exactly. Okay. Mula is somehow connected with the growth because that is where the initiation of the growth is happening. But then it so, is also known as a destructive nakshatra too. That in, where you're thinking it's growing, but it's also destroying something, right? Or breaking. See, something. Okay. Let me, let me ask you something. If something new has to come, new concepts, new things have to come. The old things have to be destroyed and you know nullified. Otherwise, nothing new can come. Yeah. So this is the genesis of something new. Old thoughts, old patterns, old habits, they have to be destroyed. They have to be finished. There should be death to them. Only then something new can come in. So this is the that's why they say it's the root of the progeny. Why, when you say root of the progeny, which means root of anything new that needs to come, yeah. then Mula becomes the genesis, which means I have to break something and discard it so that I can bring something new. I've seen many people because of, uh, you know, um, maybe, you know, because of Ardra or whatever the energy, what is there. And you see, this is the only nakshatra angle that you see the axis where a female and a male axis is perfect which means Arthra is the female dog and this is the male dog Arthra is a female dog and Mula is the male dog so look at the axis one seven it's axis. not like a Shiva energy with this then the exactly this is the Shiva energy and the other axis which is there which is Uttara Bhadrapada and Uttara Falguni which is the male cow and the female cow yeah. That, that, is, that is the Shakti, which is the feminine axis. This is the masculine axis, which is the Shiva axis. So Shiva is what? He is meant to be said to dissolve things. Why? Because if something new has to come, he has to... So, you know, for Vishnu, for Vishnu's avatars, Shiva had to come, mm -hmm. you know, to dissolve them. I'm talking about the, the first 
three or four avatars, which is half man and half animal. Yeah. Because animal like, instincts, even Vishnu cannot control it. Yeah. After a certain like Narasimha, the man lion. So there is a story where you know Shiva had to come to and it says Berunda. Berunda is a mythical bird which had to come and control the anger of you know man lion. Anyway, so what I'm saying is this is the axis of Shiva, if you really think about it. So one is the Genesis, and the other Ardra Beetlejuice is where most of them want to go. This is the spiritual axis, I call it. Why I call it the spiritual axis is all saints, you know, even in, in the pyramids, you know, the, the Giza pyramids, there is a secret duct which goes straight to Sirius and then to Beetlejuice. So for the dead body, which is kept in the center, which is the chamber. So there is a duct which goes straight and the light of Sirius is coming down and Beetlejuice. So everybody wanted to go to Ardra. Ardra is the final destination of Shiva Loka. That's the final destination where all the spiritualists want to go. People who never want to come back, then they want to go to Vaikuntha Loka. Vaikuntha Loka is the Loka of Vishnu. So Vaikuntha is the final bliss. So you want to go there. But somebody who wants to come back again for revival. for So you see many saints are born in Ardra. And this axis is very, very strong. So Mula Ardra is a very important axis. It's a male female axis of the dog. And the other axis, which is Uttara Bhadrapada and Uttara Palgun. Okay. Anyway, so uh, I think Aditya can continue and I can yeah. add more to go along. Um, right. So Aditya, uh, yeah, go ahead. It's interesting you said about um, how there's a sperm fertilizing the egg. But even if you know, the, the head of the sperm is... I think it gets detached from its body. So it's like the Rao Ketu. I have a picture here, probably. I can show you how. I think, I think your voice is feeble. Maybe you'll have to. Yeah. My voice is not perfect. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, okay. fine, fine. Yes. Yeah, I was far away from the laptop. So, do you see this picture here? Yeah. So this is like the sperm for coming and fertilizing the egg and then it touches the outer surface of the of the egg and then finally this is like broke, breaking into two the head part goes inside while the tail part remains like the Rahu Ketu playing a role I, 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 I find that very interesting like the our life starts from the play of Rahu Ketu break basically breaking the head Anyway, uh, it was interesting to see that point. Because you get detached from your past. You don't remember anything from the past. And yeah. in this life, it's all that Rahu head thing. Yeah. Okay, see, sir. also, uh, the Mula thing, just to, just to add, have you seen a lizard, whenever it gets scared, it lets go of its tail? Yeah. So, a lizard, usually they say it is more Ketu. But when um, a tailless lizard is more like Rahu. Have you ever seen a tailless yeah, lizard? Yeah, a lot of times in India. Yeah, when it is attacked by a predator or something, it just lets go of its tail as a way to, you know, uh, to run away because the predator thinks, you know, there is something there and because it's wriggling. If you really see the tail, it is wriggling for a couple of seconds before it, you know, there is life in it. So that's something like the moon, the, you know, it's very interesting to see that. Anyway, yeah, Aditya, please carry on. Share my screen. Is it visible? Yeah. Perfect. 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 Okay. So I think Dr. Fry has already said a few points. Of course, all these pictures, don't worry. Couple, it's all okay. You know, I was doing this from past three, four hours basically before our interaction. Okay, <laughs> looking all the pictures, taking out and yeah, at copyrights and all those pictures have been taken from. There. Okay, so no worries from that. Uh, it took me, it took me some time to do this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's interesting that why we are doing the moolah now. Because that is, of course, I was just thinking, like, why this Mula came now. So it's like Saturn and Ketu in 24 degrees of Sagittarius. 
Mars and Rahu is exactly at 23 and 24 of, of Gemini. So it's like, I think, pretty much Saturn, Ketu, Mars, Rahu are ex coming exactly opposite of each other. Soon our friend Mercury, Mercury will join. I think when Sun is going to join in Gemini in a few more days. So it will be like nice Sun, Mercury, Mars, Rahu in Gemini, Saturn and Ketu in Sagittarius. So it's a nice play out there. So enjoy. <laughs> Coming to Mula, as Dr. Pai said, it's also represented by reticulated roofs and it's, sometimes it's by lion's tail also. That's what they uh, say. So just by using the reticulated roots, the symbol, what are the qualities that comes to your mind? Roots, that's why Dr. Pai was saying about family lineage. You know, uh, we have a having discussion on Magha and uh, Mula uh, sometime before. So what are the roots? So roots are nothing but the foundation of the tree, which is not seen. Again, not seen. There is some K2 element there, the roots under the soil. But that is like foundation, hidden, secret, ferocious, brave, strong. These are all the words that comes when you hear about the symbol of reticulated roots and lion's tail. So maybe these are the qualities that you may be seeing in um, uh, some of your Mula natives. Okay, going to the roots. Now, when I say going to the roots, they may be good researchers. Maybe I will talk more about them in the coming uh, coming slides because they can go to the depth of the core of the study. And remember, who is the Nakshatra Lord and the Rashi Lord? Jupiter and Jupiter. It comes on the Sagittarius. So Jupiter is the Rashi Lord and Ketu is uh, the Nakshatra Lord. Okay, now it's interesting when we always say about Yogatara of Mula. Now that's very, people say, some people say GC is galactic center and some people say Lambda Scorpio is also considered as the Yogatara of Mula. So I don't know exactly, but in text, some of the text, they say Lambda Scorpio. Now it's interesting. You see the word Scorpio. So Mula, even though it's placed in Sagittarius, the stars of Mula is not in Sagittarius. It's in Scorpio. So you see this Scorpio constellation. This is the Antares. This is the Jeshta. The tail of the Scorpio is Mula. So though you say that Mula comes in Sagittarius, it's not Sagittarius. The stars are basically the tail part of the Scorpio constellation. So these are the stars of Mula. Kind of like that Garga system. Can be, yes. Yeah. Yes. And then yeah. Lambda Scorpio, this, this is a star. You see the word Lambda here. So this is a star. Some people consider that as the Yogatara of Mula. If you can, and some people consider galactic center. Now, if you come, consider galactic center, and if you see the ecliptic position, that is a Sagittarius three degree is nothing but the galactic center. And Lambda Scorpio comes at Sagittarius one degree. Now, can anyone say, when does sun transit these dates? When is sun uh, at Sagittarius 1? Yeah, 15th of December to 27th of December. Yes. 15th of December, basically December. So it is like 17th of December, sun enters Sagittarius. So around 17th or 18th of December, sun is at Sagittarius 1 degree. And if you consider Sagittarius 3, it will be around December 20, around that. It will be because in December, it is from December 17 onwards, uh, sun enters Sagittarius. So you see, but what is the speciality of December 17, 20? Did something winter. ring? It's the winter solace still. What is winter solace? Is? It is the longest night we have. Sun is to the extreme south and we have the longest night there. So, <clears throat> and I'll talk about it more, but these are some of the things that just I would like to point it out right now because I was talking about these degrees and all. Okay, so very initial degrees of, and remember, the, your, the what is the moon trikona, Dr. Pai said, of Jupiter is also in this range. I think it's some, in some text I've seen Sagittarius 10 degree, in some text even I've seen uh, uh, 5 degrees Sagittarius, uh, 0 to 5 degrees. But anyway, uh, it's few initial degrees of Sagittarius that Jupiter's moon trikona is. And this was also the point mentioned, opposite of Mula, that is the 19th nakshatra is Ardra, sixth, which is the 6th nakshatra. The deity of Ardra is Rudra, we are spheres from Shiva, and the Mula deity, 
sometimes it's a nirti sometimes people are lakshmi sometimes it they say dumavati and all those things is um, of course uh, telling about uh, some form of a fierce nature a fierce form of parvati or fierce form of shakti is there so you can see how these two nakshatras are also exactly opposite and how their deities are also exactly opposite and even animals are opposite which i will uh, i think i may be i may have in next few slides so ardra opposite is rudra and the deity is also one is mula uh, uh is kali as for ardra is for rudra and, and i think some people also in text nirti or lakshmi or tumavati you can say okay and this is just form of some rudra and uh, uh, and kali this is what the point dr pai was saying ardra you have the female dog and mula you have the male dog as the animal symbol so ardra is rudra and it's interesting rudra they have given a female dog while for shakti they have given a male dog so the, even the animal symbols are uh, opposite to each other and the other symbol other nakshatra pairs where we see opposite animal pair is nothing but which dr pai mentioned was in uttara falguni and uttara bhadrapada uttara falguni is the bull and uttara bhadrapada is the cow so only these two pairs of nakshatra ardra mula and uttara falguni and uttara bhadrapada the animal symbols are exactly opposite that means at exactly 180 degrees you can say the pair of that animal is much farther compared to any other pairs so i don't know if these people find little bit problem in their relationships can be uh, or some problems in understanding their partners can be possibility of course you know ardra and ardra is something they, they are the thoughts and other things are which are non societal or non societal very different from that and that can be a cause of problems in relationships also and having mula energy having the ferocious or maybe the fierce some energy of course it's good for some things but that can also lead to a disturbed uh, relationship matter so i'm just saying maybe that can be a theory i don't know if uh, you have observed in your in your uh, client's case and again we can see this uh, galactic center mula nakshatra is near like here is the stars of scorpio and here is your sagittarius it's look like sagittarius is also called as teapot constellation because it looks like a teapot to me uh, this is the like the head of the teapot this is the handle and uh, that's why sagittarius is considered as teapot and here is the galactic center this part is where the galactic center is and mula is here so mula is very close to the galactic center in fact this entire region is galactic center here and the word mula mool mool is what mool means the roots the mool uh where is your the origin or the soul now the, it's it's rightly the word i am surprised why they put this word to this and it's exactly matches with the center of galaxy where all the spiral arms comes out of those galaxies it looks like the the center of the galaxy is nothing but the roots of these spiral arms of galaxies so uh, it the name also matches aptly this is another picture of showing i'm showing you the this this white color is nothing but the galaxy this is the teapot and then this is your scorpio constellation here uh, very close to the galactic center now this is all the uh, constellations in the sky now remember when i am showing this this is like in a 2d dimension but it's actually a 3d so this is like a globe so that's why you see this constellations here are like expanding uh, but it's you have to imagine this as in a globe but nevertheless you see these constellations here which we are interested in and this is the uh, pisces aries taurus and gemini goes up till all the 12 constellations here and the mula is somewhere here and then this line is called as ecliptic which we, as we know is the path of the sun so you see that the sun is exact the, the highest point or the northernmost point is at gemini that means it is at ardra nakshatra and at the sun which is at the lowest or the southernmost point is nothing but at mula that's why you have 20th december as the winter solstice because the sun is the southernmost when the sun is southernmost you have the longest night in the northern hemisphere so that's why in northern hemisphere you have the nights are longer when the sun is in mula which aptly again match, matches with your uh, the 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 concept of you know, the dark regions of the sky which uh, and here is nothing but now the sun is at uh, sun is in gemini 
and i think uh, it's i think now it is very it's, it's in mirgashira in another few days it will go in ardra then the sun and that's why we are having going to have summer solstice in on on june 21st or no, june 20th or june 21st when sun is in ardra so that's the reason you can see the path of the sun is not straight it's it's like going north and south of course it's not the sun going north and south but it's basically the earth tilt now but here we are kept the earth as a reference and then we see the sun going north and south the sun is in the extreme north in ardra it's extreme south in mula um toya i had a question if you go back to the slide um have you seen any um correlation with this opiphius constellation that is shown correlation of course and now uh, people have put this in uh, we don't discuss about this but there's a small part which is uh, um, which the sun spends some part in uh, opiscus constellations which is near very very near to the scorpio so somewhere in around that may happen in uh, early part of december and all okay so that, yeah for that the, again uh, if you are born in the early part of december you may be may be possible as sun is in opiscus constellation for you but have you seen any um, relation to that astrologically like what it may represent? but the properties of opiscus we don't know like well, like what who is the lord of opiscus yeah uh, we only put a scorpio and then that's all we do but uh, we don't know uh, who is the lord and what are the properties of this sign and other things we generally term that as scorpio so maybe who knows but remember it's yeah. very hidden you know scorpio is what eighth house eighth house is hidden yeah Don't know the actually yeah, i can uh, i can add in on ophiuchus right now to clean like and you know actually uh, you know scorpio as as uh, actually what um, antio was saying about uh, how um, scorpio is very hidden you know ophiuchus is like one of the actual it's a very powerful sign and uh, really black magicians and western occultists would wait until planets are there in ophiuchus and when you meditate upon ophiuchus you actually get more a uh, lot of uh, Spiritual power, lot of uh, magical uh, abilities, stuff like that. You know, actually, right now Jupiter, technically Jupiter should be in Ophiuchus right now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and there is a lot of secrets in Ophiuchus. There's a reason. They there are, there are some people who say that there is a reason why Ophiuchus was not even shared before. You know, because they 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 want that power to be shared by no one should be aware about it, things like that. You know, and remember, Ophiuchus would be falling in Jesta region of uh, Scorpio, more or less. So it's again pointing to the actual spiritual power that is there, you know. And there's a lot of uh, lot of hidden uh, things there in Ophiuchus. Uh, there's a reason why it's kept hidden, kept secret also, you know. So that's what I would like to add. Uh, definitely, if you work with Ophiuchus, if you look at that, there's a lot of secrets you'll find. Uh, but yeah, that's Sandeep, something. Have you seen someone with their planet exactly at this particular region, and what their experience? Well, uh, Uh, you know that would fall more or less in jeshta you know oh, okay. i've seen them becoming uh, jeshta last two padas of jeshta right i've seen uh, i've seen them becoming very uh, they are gifted in the occult sciences for sure that's something i can say straight up like they will know astrology they will know like you know uh, what were other occult signs they will know tantric kind of thing you know they'll have they'll be extremely Black psychic magic. all that kind of stuff yeah yeah all that magic magic is like you know will be like uh, life and <laughs> life and uh, you know uh breath to them it will be like breathing for them you know like hollywood and like governments how they use this for sure they use for sure they stuff. would be using this yeah opiuchus is like a very powerful for sure that's something i read uh, you know uh, in some occult sciences uh, website but uh, for sure this it made a lot of sense when you when you look at that you know uh, because it's falling astrologically it will be falling technically in the jeshta region which is exactly what indra is which is exactly yeah, what yeah. Uh, Indra's energy all between the king trying to overpower and all those. Like what I was also, um, you know, it's very interesting. I've seen this last two parts, the padas of Jester. I've seen a lot of correlation with the spies and spying and secret missions. Oh. Because especially the third pada of Jester. Why in the Navamsha it goes into Aquarius Navamsha. The third pada is Aquarius. large organizations secret agencies of large organizations you know i'm talking about financial uh, organization and financial level at the very top level you know what i'm saying things like goldman sachs 
you know, yeah. Ev, uh, what, do you, uh, what is the name of the guy who is a financial controller of United States? What do you call him? Treasurer. Treasurer, no, he's called secretary. What? Secretary of State, Treasury. Yeah, Treasury. Yeah. So many of the ex people are sitting on the board of Goldman Sachs. Yeah. Why? <laughs> so that's a business organization which controls a lot of the financial hub. So Jester third father, I've seen more of that. And Jester fourth father is Pisces Navamsha. Okay. Cool. So Carry on, Aditya. Interesting. I, actually, I don't know whether the photo is populated. That's why I'm not showing it. But Jesta third father is where exactly the sun is going through the stars of Ophiuchus. So Jesta third father and fourth father. So yeah, Jesta is the region where exactly. Um, I just type in um, Google about Ophiuchus and you can see the constellation part and all those and try to figure out. I don't know whether the picture is copyrighted or not. So I don't want to show. And one more thing I wanted to just uh, you know point out, which Aditya mentioned about whenever sun transits through Mula, it's roughly between, as he said, you know, 17th of uh, December to about 27th of December or around that 29th. There is a very important phenomenon that is happening there, which is the 25th of uh, December. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to talk about that. Let me yeah, not speak. Go ahead, Dr. Pai, you have put that point. So. Yeah, because what I see is maybe that is coming, you know, Christmas is celebrated on 25th. There is some correlation with the sun and Mula. And I let Aditya speak about it. You know, maybe uh, sun some... and Mula, that's what sun is at the lowermost point at that at that, at that junction. Uh, so it's like to say. But is it true, Aditya? That the sun looks as though for three days it is sinking and then it starts moving upwards, and that's what they say is the resurrection. Is you know many of them say sun feels as though it has gone three days, it goes down, and then from there it moves up upwards. This is about three days, but definitely you see that time onwards the sun starts moving north. Like what happens okay. after? Yeah, but it was dipping, 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 and then it comes to a standstill and it dips, and then it again starts its northern uh, journey. Is that true? Is that how it looks in the sky? I'm looking at more from the sky if you're observing how the sun is from the It can be going down, 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 and then it starts increasing. Maybe one or two days it can be stationary there. Stationary, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Because it's at the curve, so it looks as though it's stationary for you know one or two days and then it starts as not then starts So that's what declination wise. So that's yeah. And the same thing happens opposite on June 20th, 21st, when it is like come because now we are going in from uh, northern to southern. Greece. So, yeah, and the dates of Ophiuchus, they say the sun is transiting from November 29th to December 17th. So, if you say November 29th, that comes around, yeah, Jeshta basically. It's the entire. Okay. Uh, so it's about 12 degrees. So it's completing Jeshta and a little bit of uh, Anuradha too, but mostly Jeshta. Okay. All right. Do you have more slides? Oh, yeah, I do have many. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me, uh, let me share my screen. Anyway. I think, yeah, this point we already discussed about winter solstice. Supermassive black hole near gas. So this is what I'm saying. Like, uh, if you see from the Earth, then this is where the, uh, like, Earth is somewhere around the outskirts of galaxy. And when you see it, this is not the Milky Way. And when you see towards the Mula, you will land into the center of galaxy. And this was the picture of um, a black hole, which was just recently taken on 10th April 2019. Uh, how does a black hole look? Now, this is something interesting. How can we say about black hole, the stars? People ask me, like, how, how do we know there is a black hole there? Of course, the stars are moving around that. And when it said that when stars come to a black hole, they move starts moving faster. Okay. And the, they spin faster because when they're close to the black hole, the, the rotation goes very fast. So understanding different motion of stars, like for example, if you take all the stars which are very near to the galactic center, you can say that this, that black hole may be somewhere here. Okay, anyway, this is 
and this another symbol for this is about potter's wheel now you can compare this diagram with the galaxy the galaxy is also like going round and then the potter's wheel the mula nakshatra that is also so there are many symbols for mula nakshatra one is one is uh, reticulated roots the other is lion's tail other is that elephant's goat now this is the potter's wheel and it exactly resembles like to me like a galaxy and uh, this tells you about maybe something about their life how the things revolve around the life of mula individual people and the situations may be turbulent but i think that's all for destruction and then for a new construction something like that so they may be going through some turbulence in their life but that is only for uh, betterment for the future now this was something as dr pai said the shakti of this nakshatra is barhana shakti that means power to destroy or to break foundation above energy is to break or foundation below is to crush and we know that whatever comet which goes around this black hole or something uh, is like or stars going around that may just disrupt and then it will break so that means it has got enough potential energy to basically break the things and that energy very well matches with this nakshatra energy power to destroy or to break now i don't know whether this is uh, there is some a movie here which is which you can see uh, there are many stars and you can see this black hole coming and just observe this one uh, as it comes closer and closer to the uh, black hole now the stars are all moving here and then this is the exaggerated picture of that uh, uh, comet and comet or maybe not comet it's some some gas cloud basically it's not a comet i should sorry it's a gas cloud and then when it goes it's totally disrupted so that's what so the power you can see the power of this nakshatra or power of this is like the barana shakti which is like everything which it comes near to it it destroys and this and just again showing that and now you can understand 10 light days so as it comes nearer and nearer this is this this distance is 10 light days so it is coming near 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 to the black hole and it looks like 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 again like a sperm or something to me which is like a ketu head and the tail and that it is when it goes the gas cloud is dispersed that's the power of this uh, uh, galactic center the other thing which i also like about is this ketu now when dr pai said about mula mula is going to the depth what is the uh, nakshatra lord of this uh, planetary lord of this um, mula is ketu what is ketu in uv spect or in the spectrum of light ketu is given as what region it's about all infrared region correct now infrared is very useful because it will allow you to see through the dust it will allow like that is a this is a sky region and there is something obstructing here now this is 0.44 micron is nothing but the blue light you see, if if i show you just this picture you will say that there is nothing there is a hole in the sky and people used to call this as hole in the sky but when you observe at different wavelengths again it looks like a hole 0.9 micron is like red red color but when you go to infrared region you see there are some stars appearing now when i show this at 2.2 micron you see that if i show this picture you will not even say that there is any hole it's just like normal what is ketu that means infrared infrared will allow you to pierce through the dust and it will show you the real real thing what is hidden behind the dust so it's not zoomed in it's the exact same picture it's exact same picture okay the exact same picture wow blue light green light red light infrared and it go higher and higher wavelengths that means you are going more and more in infrared that's why astronomers always like infrared i mean i am an infrared astronomer in fact i work mostly in infrared and radio waves mostly my 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 main phd subject was entirely based on infrared so that the reason why it's black is because these are redshift stars that are far far away no that's because there is something of there's a gas cloud which is in the path in between us oh i see okay okay so because that gas is gas is not allowing that light to come from those stars so that's okay. why it's so cold but it doesn't allow the blue green and the red light but when you go in infrared it just infrared just pierces through that so that's a okay, ghostly energy 
Mm. <laughs> Where people cannot see something, but then some people can see it. Yeah. But that shows you the nature of Mula. They will go to the depth and understand the topic. So that's what I wanted to say. Because that's what the Ketu. What is Ketu? Ketu is spirituality, correct? It will clear off your uh, dusty path of your materialism and show you the spiritual path. That's See, it's a good thing, you know, Aditya is mentioning, which I also wanted to add to what he's saying. You know, the, the microscope is the Ketu, the telescope is the Rahu. So Rahu is all about, you know, atmospheric endeavors, space, you know, research, astronomy is Rahu, the telescope. The microscope is the Ketu. Anything you do. And then, you know, it's very interesting to see, you know, um, maybe Aditya or Santip can also add to this, is about the whole process of Mula Nakshatra is nothing but it is the Barahana Shakti means to, to crush and to break, right? If you really understand the physics behind it, it's nothing but it's a nuclear fission. Have you heard of nuclear fission where, uh, you know, a nucleus is broken into two atoms, right? That's, that's what I believe, if, if I recollect splitting <clears throat> and energy is released when it splits it's, it's the opposite of fusion so it is more like when you're splitting two things energy is being released that is the energy which is coming from this mula, uh, mula the center and is that the uh, you know Aditya, is that the process through which new stars are born and you know stars is it fusion related mostly what is happening in the activity in the stars in a way, yes, yes. All the fusion. Yeah, fusion so, and... Uh, yeah. Because those, those gas clouds, then they disperse and then they form again new stars and all. Mm. Okay. Anyway, so... So let's understand what is the energy of Mula and then this is Rashi Lord, Nakshatra Lord and Navamsha. Now Mula, entire Mula comes in uh, Sagittarius Rashi. So the Rashi Lord becomes a Jupiter. The Mula, the Nakshatra Lord is Ketu. So first father, if you consider, the Rashi is Sagittarius, so the Lord is Jupiter. The Nakshatra is Mula, so the Lordship is Ketu. And the first father of Mula is Ashwini, Ashwini, or not Ashwini, but Aries Navamsha, the Lord is Mars. <coughs> so the first father of the first father of Mula is basically having energies of Jupiter, Ketu, and Mars. The second father, of course, the Rashi Lord and the Nakshatra Lord doesn't change. The Navamsha is Taurus, so the Lord is Venus. The third Pada, Navamsha is Gemini, so the Lord is Mercury. And the fourth Pada, the Navamsha is Moon, the Navamsha is Cancer, the Lord is Moon. But you see, the Jupiter and Ketu plays an important role, and Jupiter Ketu Ma, the first Pada will be extremely, it may be, of course, Jupiter, as we know, it's research and um, knowledge and uh, devotion and spirituality, philosophy, and Ketu is also having a similar energies basically. Now when it gets the first father of Mula, when it gets Jupiter Ketu mass, the person can be technical because the mass qualities may come in more. So the person may be very technical, may be practical, may be very dynamic, may be aggressive and all those. The second pada and maybe the fourth pada may not be that much because they have the Navamsha Lord as Venus and Moon, but still they have the Jupiter and Ketu energy, but much in a little bit milder, milder way. The third pada is Jupiter, Ketu, Mercury. They may be more of intellectual and other things. So, the, and remember, on the first pada, we have that Gandamula nakshatras also, where Dr. Pai was talk, talking about uh, having uh, uh, this Mool, uh, Gandamula nakshatras, which I think I may have a slide later about. So, that. what this pretty much shows me is that first pada is destruction, second pada is devotion, third pada is intellect, fourth pada is. Uh, um, depression or affecting the mind with the destruction. It cannot be just negative, but that can be also be a positive yeah. thing there. Intuition, maybe. Maybe intuition. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The first pada may be much more dynamically aggressive. So maybe yeah. Mula first pada will be a little bit more aggressive dynamic that you have to see compared to rest other padas. Okay. <clears throat> This is again Guru and Ketu. Of course, the other thing which comes in mind is Guru is research and That's the na natural be um, behavior of these natives. Ketu is also the Lord of Scorpio, co Lord of Scorpio along with Mars. So that means it's giving some occult knowledge and all. And with that, you put this Guru so that Mula people will be definitely having a very different view of uh, research and occult and spiritual quest or devotion. 
Now, what is this Gandabula nakshatra? As Dr. Pai was saying about there are three, uh, six or three pairs or six nakshatra. One is going from Ashwini to, or Revati to Ashwini. That is one. And the other one is going from Ashleka to Magha, that part. And the other third part is nothing but uh, going from uh, Jeshta to Mula. Now the Ashwini, Revati to Ashwini is called Swagandanta, Self Gandanta. And Ashlesha to uh, this one, uh, Magha is called as Matru Gandanta. And uh, last one, that is Jeshta to Mula, is considered as Pitru Gandanta. So they say that maybe uh, if moon in this Swagandanta, it will give problems for yourself. If the moon is near Matru Gandanta, maybe issues for this mother or issues for mother, something. And in Pitru Gandanta, where this Jupiter and uh, Mula lies, uh, again, it's a problem for the father more. Um, or maybe or some problem to you from the father, something like that. One thing I will also add in this, that the, the third father where Mercury is, mm -hmm. I've actually seen a person who's a forensic accountant. They go deep into the accounting to nitpick things. Yes, yes, yes. I oh, just yeah. remember. See, you can, you can probably, you know, you can also see a lot of people who would be in, um, you know, Moola. I've seen people who are in audit, auditing account, auditing things, you know, trying to decipher, you know, uh, to fish out problems. Yes. And I've seen a lot of uh, charts people who work for organizations where they're into uh, financial audits and other forms of audits and investigations. So remember this, all this Naksha, Jupiter, Ketu, Mercury, Jupiter knowledge, Mercury mathematics, Ketu is also sometimes considered mathematics or content and all those with numbers, they can be good with. Yeah. I'm remembering Ramanujan, Srinivas Ramanujan, you know, his, his birthday is on 22nd December. His son is in Mula. It has to be in Mula, five degrees Mula. In what, what is his birthday? I'll put it right now. 22nd December, uh -huh. 1887, I guess. Just okay. Sunday is at five degrees of, uh, of, of Sagittarius. Because 22nd is what? Five days after 17 December. It, he was yeah, Sunday is in third pada. Yeah. Third pada. How can third pada or uh... no? It's third pada here. Oh, okay. I mean, I can share it and show it to you guys, but it's in the third pada on December twenty second, eighteen eighty seven. Okay, yeah, because so Mercury, uh, the the accounting mathematics. Yes. So you see, Jupiter Ketu, the Sun is in that. Yeah. He has got Jupiter, Ketu, and Mercury. So Jupiter is, you know, he used to call God, yeah. used to come in his dreams and occult thing and all those. Oh, wait. Okay. Oh. Here is another chart that I want to give you. And, uh, you know, Mula. Uh -huh. Have you heard of uh, uh, a great supercomputer, human supercomputer? Uh -huh. Her name was Shakuntala Devi. Have you heard of Shakuntala Devi? Anybody? Yeah, Shakuntala Devi, yes, 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 yes. Kapil, have you heard of Shakuntala Devi? I think so. Shakuntala Devi, she could just calculate, you know, numbers and whatever, you know. Um, she's like a supercomputer, super brain. She has her Lagna Lord. I'm just looking. I was inquisitive. She has her Lagna Lord, at, uh, which is Saturn, Capricorn Lagna, in uh, Mula Nakshatra, second father. At four oh, degrees. Okay. Second, second bada is shown there. Okay. So mathematics again, and computing, supercomputing. I feel you know people who work with even mainframes, in the old old days you know you had these mainframes and big big computing supercomputing yeah. device. There's something to do with Mula, definitely. That's interesting. Very interesting. See, computing again, if you look at it, uh, you know, it's all about ones and zeros, right? True. Computing is ones and zeros. Yeah. So if you really look at one, one is like the K2, which is a thin one. And uh, the zero is like the Rahu, ones and zeros, Rahu K2. Zero is like the head of Rahu. So it's all about K2. I see more of K2 people who come into computing. K2 has something to do with the computing, I feel. 
Hetu is the past, isn't it? Memory, past, and everything. Very strong correlation. But you see, uh, I, I was not even remembering Srinivasa Ramanujan. I just remembered that his birthday falls on that. Uh, and you know, his 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 occult like Ketu, you know, his dreams used to come and all those for him. So it's exactly maybe typical. What was the movie of Srinivasa, the man who knew infinity, right? That's the new movie, movie yes. of Srinivasa Ramanujan, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. I wrote a script on that screenplay back in. 2003. I read his book and I'm like, I want to write a screenplay on it. Uh, it was the most brilliant thing. Did you, did you share your script? I, I did share my script with uh, one of the people who were at that time uh, trying to actually develop a movie on him. And okay. they're like, this is a very excellent beginning, but it has a lot of flaws. You're missing a lot of information. And I'm like, I probably did it half fast, but it's like, I love how you have picturized the beginning and how he is, who he is. But he did say, no, there was a lot of flaws. So I'm sure I missed a lot of things, but I was so obsessed with his book when I read it. I'm like, I want to write a screenplay on it. Because I was watching Beautiful Mind came out at that time. That's what got right. me in, in Ramanujan. Right. That's interesting. Okay, so now... Just, okay, let's talk something about, uh, now when I say Mula, it's also sometimes I feel it's like the Muladhara Chakra or something where I find some, maybe it's connecting to the Mula, the base energy basically. And uh, <clears throat> now what is this Chakra thing? It's for seven chakras, we know, and it's, it's, it is said that the uh, Lord Ganapati guides that um, uh, Muladhara Chakra and it's the energy, the Shakti is residing there. Which wants to try to man, meet with Sahasra or all, all those, all this chakra level and all those. So it's like again the Ganpati guarding and the energy. So I just thought maybe the Muladhar, I don't know whether Mula has got some connection to the Muladhar chakra or the root chakra. It's also sometimes called as root chakra. Okay, now this was interesting. Now some festivals, as I always like festivals. Now, as I told you, the sun transits Mula from 17th December till 30th of 30th or 31st December. So 17th to 30th December, what all the festivals that come? Of course, the first festival is 25th December is a Christmas day. And what was the message of Jesus Christ? You know, all about, see, Jupiter Ketu is very prominent of Mula energy. Jupiter's devotion, knowledge, philosophy, all those things. And Ketu is again occult and spiritual and again devotion and all those things. And of course, now we don't know whether uh, there is a controversial date whether Jesus Christ was born on 25th December or not. But still, the world celebrates 25th December uh, as the Christmas day. So, when sun is exactly transiting Mula. Now, another festival which is Gita Jayanti, which is the 11th day of the waxing moon of Marga Shirsha month. Uh, on that day, we celebrate Gita Jayanti. It is said that Lord Krishna delivered Gita. To Arjuna on this day. Now, uh, again, when the sun is transiting this, we celebrate Gita Jayanti. And what is Gita? Again, the knowledge, the Jupiter and the Ketu energy you can see. So, all the festivals which we see, Moksha Dai Kadeshi, which is again something about uh, spiritual and devotion and all those things, and getting Moksha basically. So, it's all the Ketu energy and the Jupiter energy. The, even in the, in the festival themes, I see all very spiritual festivals. It's not. Um, not like holy and all where we enjoy and all, of course all festivals we do enjoy but this is more like more like understanding uh, the spiritual and the higher development or maybe uh, what you say atma atmic level festivals i will say i just invented some words now another uh, festival which is celebrated when sun transit dattatre jayanti which is uh, celebrated on a, a full moon day in the marga shirsha month Again, Dattatre Jayanti is considered as the Guru, uh, correct? And again, Guru is where this Mula energy is nothing but again controlled by Jupiter and Guru. And he was the one who gave a lot of messages and again spirituality. So all the festivals are very well connected with the themes of spirituality or research or philosophy, learning for your soul development during this time. 
Now let's give some examples. Of, I was looking for some dates when this, uh, when what were the things happened with Mula Nakshatra, and 9/11. Of course, everyone knew September 11, 2001, the twin tower thing. And when you see the chart, you see K2. Uh, Merc of course, <coughs> Mars is at seven degrees Sagittarius, perfectly Mula. K2 is at 8 degrees. So Mars and K2 very well, very close to each other. And exactly opposite is Rahu, Jupiter, Moon. They are all aspecting this uh, Mars and K2. So you can see five energies, five planetary energies are having an effect on the uh, Mula Nakshatra here. And what happened? Complete destruction. Now, of course, there's again a lot of debate who destroyed this, but there's clearly some destruction happened. And you see the Twin Tower got destroyed on that day, perfectly on a Mula day. I don't know if anyone planned accordingly or not <laughs> using these dates. The other thing, 26 December 2004, uh, a tsunami day here. And I was just looking uh, the chart which happened because 26 December immediately caught my attention that sun has to be in Mula. Sun is at 10 degree uh, 41 minutes. And when you say Rahu, if you take the ninth aspect of Rahu and the moon's uh, aspect here, uh, it's on Mula again and again a massive destruction happening on that day too and then finally I was like I was interested this is my own field so I was interested of what happened uh, this is the first this this year we had this black hole image and that was announced on 10th April 2019 I don't remember it was a morning time I I still remember because that was the announcements and all were going on um, and uh, it was morning time and the place, I don't know whether it was a DC or in Washington DC where they showed this picture at double A's or something. Uh, I don't, but it was definitely 10th April 2019 where the first time we saw the image of this black hole. And I just made the chart to see what planets were there. I didn't make a horoscope, uh, something like a chart, but at least these were the planetary positions on that day. You can see that the Jupiter is at one degree Sagittarius again in Mula, which, which Dr. Pai was saying about uh, Jupiter came in Mula and we got an image of the black hole this year. Saturn and Rahu was, Saturn was in again Sagittarius, so Jupiter and Saturn were together. Rahu was aspecting it and even Mars was aspecting it. So uh, Rahu and Mars both were aspecting it because Mars, eight aspect will fall in Sagittarius. So Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Rahu and even Ketu. Ketu is also in Sagittarius. So one, two, three, four, almost four, one, five planets there. Mars and Rahu aspecting and Jupiter, Saturn, Ketu in Sagittarius. And during this time, we got the first uh, time the image of the black hole. So definitely uh, another example of who is born on 25th December is Isaac Newton, the great scientist. Sun was transiting Mula on that day. And... Uh, I think everyone knows about Einstein and the fundamental laws of physics and all those things. The base, the base of physics or the moolah of physics, the roots of physics. And finally, I will just give my final side of uh, uh, moolah qualities. The foundation, it's called a foundation star. Moolah is nothing but the root going to the depth. Power is to ruin, destroy and break for betterment. Uh, base is about to break, base is below to crush. Animal is the male dog, bird is vulture. Trimurti is Brahma. So Brahma, again, it's a constructive nakshatra where you see those uh, Ketu, all Ketu nakshatras are Brahma nakshatras. And desire is to find the root of all progeny. So I think I have taken already a lot of time. And with that, I should uh, keep quiet now. All right. Mr. Kanoli. Well, uh, Kapilji, why don't you go ahead and uh, share what you have to share? Uh, then I'll go up after that. Well, Mula, uh, Nakshatra. He, he shared basically all the things. But one thing that I've noticed with the Mula people is that, you know how we talk about the roots. I have seen Mula people who are about uprooting things. If something doesn't work out, or even if it's, let's say, it's working out, everything is going fine. They'll be like, I'm going to uproot my job. I'm going to uproot this relationship. Like when I get like, say I'm doing career consultation for someone, they're like, I'm happy with this company. I've been with this company for uh, seven years now, but I just, I'm, I just really want to change my job and I want something new. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling I'm like stuck in this. 
and those comments when I see or when someone says I am happy with the relationship, but it's not something that I don't think it's my ideal relationship. I don't know if I should. And this, do you see something else in it? And I see plan is dominating with the moolah showing that it's, they don't want to like up, like root themselves in a relationship. I actually see they want to take that relationship out and then plant a new relationship in. So that's one of the big things that we see here. And then also, um, I've seen people actually like Togi Aditya, uh, who are astronomers, um, not astronomers, but people who are um, doing research in like, um, not just astronomy, but like they're using astronomy and they're using scientific chemicals to d discover things. It's yeah. weird. It's like biomechanical, biomedical type science. Exactly, yeah. And especially also one thing I've seen with Mula is people who work with vaccines. I don't know why vaccines. I guess yeah, it's like yeah, I had that. something inside your body. I had that slide, but then I just skipped that. You know, poison or venom of scorpion is where at the tail. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they, they work with syringes. So yeah. I've seen pharmaceutical and I've seen people who deal with a lot of um, vaccine, they research on vaccines. So these are some of the tidbits that I've seen on my website, but also like I was saying, I've seen people who do forensic accounting, people who go deep into how a company is managing their funds. And they say they keep their research on things that other people haven't found. So these are the actual practical, realistic views with Moolah that I've, you know, seen with people. You pointed that vaccine because that was the tail, you know, scorpion. Where there's yeah, yeah. Like whether it's poison, whether it's like anti-poison, anti you know, they, they have to do that. So they work with that. Just observe. Okay, great. Uh, the, yeah. yeah. That's all. Great. Great. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I think, uh, uh, you know, we talked a lot now. <laughs> I know we have been preparing Mula for a long time. So I had accumulated a lot of points <laughs> all the time, you know. Uh, so, um, well, first thing I'll say is like, uh, um, you know, if you talk about Mula, right, just like in simple English language terms, you say, oh, you have some Mula, it means money, right? So straight up, you can say there is this, you know, these natives will be kind of good money, financial consulting, financial accounting, all that makes sense from that perspective also uh, you know and then what is interesting is that uh, with uh, mula it's also kind of with the roots you know on a mula day when i was actually doing some pilgrimage a uh, couple of years back i was actually in kanyagumari so i met this like uh, you know this farmer's lady this farmer's lady was there and okay she said okay uh, let's let me i said oh it's a mula day let me talk with some advisor or whatever right and then i talked to her and then she's like okay here um, Give me some additional money and I'll take all your uh, negative dosha away. And stuff like that. you know that's how they do, right? They'll say, okay, give me some additional money, I'll take you more. Give me some additional money, I'll take your curses away. That kind of thing. So I was curious. Let's let's see what's happening. She was not asking that much of money, and she actually took a took some roots of some plant, put that on my ha uh, hands, and just threw it away into the ocean. You know, it wasn't this wasn't Kanyakumari, right? So that's yeah. an interesting thing. So it's kind of interesting how she used some roots to remove my dosha. That was an interesting observation. And I was doing that, Dr. Pai is a nakshatra awareness exercise at that time, you know. So that was one interesting thing. And then uh, now, very interesting with uh, Mula again is that it's connected with plants. So people who love biology, people who love all that kind of plant stuff, you know, they have incredible memory, uh, things like that. Uh, you know, and in, in fact, the, and the plant associated with Mula is frankincense. So these are the natives who will be great burning frankincense. They'll be burning sage all the time, you know, that kind of thing. And that's very good for them, actually. So for any people with uh, planets here, burning sage is one of the actual thing I actually recommend to them. Burn frankincense more in your home, you know, burn sage and purify the negativity more in your home, that kind of thing. Always have some kind of smoke going on, you know. So usually these are the natives, who in, even if you do the puja of a deity or stuff, you are supposed to show the smoke or the dhup. So that's something I recommend also. Just show, start showing the smoke to the deity. Also, the dhup in the Indian puja kind of thing. That's one of the things there. And uh, again, there's a lot of... Uh, one interesting thing with roots again is that, uh, you know, uh, there is a plant called as black turmeric. That's something I actually recommend. So you can actually buy this black turmeric, yes. put that, 
and suddenly it's it's a root based plant so it's like a turmeric right it grows underground and stuff so and supposedly this plant is very powerful uh, from a tantric tantric you use it for all kinds of things you can find lot of info on that but then if you uh, when it said that uh, it, it's kind of interesting when there's when uh, a lady i know like grew this plant uh, you know uh, the the moment when the plant sprouted suddenly she came across money you know, that is interesting and black turmeric much like turmeric is jupiter black is like kali so it's interesting like uh, how that uh, I just wanted uh, to show you the black turmeric. Apparently, I had some black turmeric. Am I there? Oh, okay. This is a black turmeric. Oh, great. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that. Yeah. So great, great, Doctor Pai. Thanks for showing that uh, black turmeric. You know, I think that black turmeric is very powerful plant. If you can get that, grow that, all that's supposed to be very auspicious. Protects you. against uh, any destructive kind of energy spirits all that kind of things you know that is great now the other thing with uh, mula um, is also i um, i tell these natives to have you mula remember mula is also the roots right so if you look at the roots from a geographical kind of thing you find more roots going in back down into the earth so the actual places where you actually see the root of the earth like which is like a volcano hot springs geysers right so i i ask these natives have you been to a volcano have you been to any geyser kind of hot springs or something like that and they'll see yes you know i've been to hawaii or i've been to like indonesia bali somewhere something like that you know that kind of thing is very common and i tell these natives also for if you go to a volcano region that can actually activate that particular planet you will experience some kind of energetic shift energetic transformation you come back and something big happens to you you know that kind of thing you're wrecking the volcano <laughs> <laughs> you do that yeah you know you know there are, You, you know hawaiian people have a lot of rituals around the volcanoes there are a yeah. lot of uh, powerful thing you know in fact that um, there's that hawaiian cartoon right which disney released uh, uh, the moana and stuff it's it's about a volcano and a lady who was a volcano you know it's very interesting cartoon the moana cartoon which you can see a lot of these themes play out you know and um, so that's one thing i uh, recommend also um the other thing is that uh, you now it's kind of funny that um, you know mula is you have to remember mula is kind of goddess kali and nrithi right nrithi is the ferocious form of goddess kali so sometimes i ask these natives have your life been affected by destructive women <laughs> or you know there will be yes or oh, yes you know some kind of destructive women this is not to kind of like uh, say any kind of uh, you know not to generalize it or something but sometimes these natives have dealt with very destructive women because kali like energy can be very ferocious and you know goddess kali is um, the real goddess kali's blessing is some kind of destruction that happens in your life and it's a blessing in disguise and thanks to that kind of uh, thanks to that kind of destruction something new has happened to you you know something new has come forth new spiritual growth has come forth lot of transformation has happened things like that so i've seen these natives uh, in general going for like you know uh, very you know women who are like bipolar or women who have some kind of issues things like that that's something i've seen and that's something i tell them also but what is interesting is that um, then i asked them about their family roots and they'll say that yes my there was some kind of karma or some kind of woman was um, uh, abused in my family history or something like that you know it's like uh, there was some kind of karma in which they had to the grandmother didn't didn't uh, wasn't treated well or something like that and that kind of karma is coming back to them uh, you know that kind of thing is what is actually uh, one of the reason um that is one thing so this karma of destructive women and exactly what kapil ji said about uh, uprooting uh you know one thing i've seen is i asked them have you been uprooted so like uprooting in this modern day and uh context would be like um, you shift a job from one city to another city you completely shift your house from one place to another place you know that kind of thing is a very common thing for these yeah. natives uh, in terms of being also morticians and undertakers with mula yep. who are fascinated with graveyards why is very yep. around the body yep Yeah, exactly that. You know, that's one thing. And then uh, you know, uh, you know, one thing with uh, mula is that this fun, this roots can also mean the fundamentals. You know, these are the natives who always focus on the fundamentals, and uh, it's always great. Even for any scientist, focusing on the fundamentals is always beautiful. And these natives, you know, uh, go to the point where they have to understand the definition of each word perfectly. And these are the natives who are spending a lot of time. searching through the dictionaries understanding the perfect words you know and many times they it makes them excellent lawyers but no matter what they will have this love for dictionary that's something i've seen in fact um, you know um, and these are the natives who would try to scribble down everything they will go through dictionary understand the word in, uh, for instance eminem the uh, rapper 
right he he had a planet in mula he has jupiter in mula i believe and his entire life he had some big destruction and then he had to come out of it and yeah. he had this habit of actually searching through words in dictionary completely and that's how he he built it up you know that's one uh, that's one thing i have noticed now many times people with planets in mula you have to remember it's um, ruled by jupiter it's following the sign of jupiter as well as the nakshatra lord is ketu so many times these natives uh, you know how they, they these are natives who don't like ordinary guru so they want some kind of different guru and when they get a guru uh, most of the time they are more likely to you know <laughs> be against that guru or fight against that guru things like that you know though it's more in pressure upload the guru that kind of thing can happen also but what i've seen is that you know these natives are more or less uh, likely to have gurus in the psychic planes so they will meet gurus in the psychic plane so they will be like having dreams about uh, you know gurus and stuff like that they'll meet their gurus and some kind of old man is coming in their dream and giving them advice and stuff like that you know that kind of thing is something i've seen now uh, you have to remember um, um, mula is and these are the natives because of their focus on very fundamentals of uh, words and grammar and stuff like that they they are very um, they don't care about what they say that's one big thing they have this very tikshna kind of energy they are very they are like i don't i don't care this is what this is the truth this is the truth so i'll just say it you know they can kind of very destructive adra and mola kind of thing is very strong for these natives in fact um, one one guy in the chart which ug uh, had shared a long time back ago was this chart of this jordan peterson like this professor who's like fighting yes, i know him yeah he's like right. feminist in yeah feminist in canada and stuff like that i know he's like yeah. carrying that kind of fem- destructive kali energy so kali energy need not always be carried by women alone you know it can also be carried by a man easily you know that district it's an energy and the thing with mula is that of uh, caves so i've seen that mula is also connected with very ancient temples so i asked these natives have you been to any ancient temples and they, many times they'll say yes ancient temples that are in ruins and stuff now what is interesting about temples is that uh, most of the temples have a mula kshetra in most of the famous temples in india they have a small temple which is the origin point so i tell these natives to make sure that they go to the mula mula kshetra or mula uh, temple of that particular uh, 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 famous temple also and also to go to cave temples any kind of cave temples is also connected with uh, mula because caves caves are underground and uh, many times these natives love uh, love to go cave uh, go to caves uh, they love to go caving stuff like that you know now uh, what is another interesting thing with the mula is that of um, books no books is you have to remember it's, it's sagittarius canyons you know grand canyon and all oh grand canyon yeah probably for sure yes grand canyon very now what is beautiful now uh, volcanoes uh, grand canyon hot springs geyser these are all places of natural wonder these are all actually these are all very old temples you know they are very beautiful they are they are the temples of pure nature alone you know it's like pristine nature is what you will find there so in that way these natives have this natural love to go to this um, uh parks you know national parks uh, hiking there all that kind of things you know that is very strong there now with uh, one one thing with um, mula is also you have to remember that um, it is where the sign sagittarius begins and it's ruled by jupiter jupiter is all books so many times these natives also have some kind of spiritual book in their house maybe some kind of spiritual book there will be like some old magical book stuff like that you know uh, there will be some kind of you know there is something special about some certain spiritual books you know, here is a interesting thing um many of the religions like about the bible uh, you know stuff like that they have that bible will be a central and that will always if any book is a central of that really uh, center of that religion there is going to have that mula kind of energy to it you know in fact one interesting thing is that what um, i was actually uh, found out from this client in which uh, you know you when you keep a spiritual book in your home like say uh, say many of the people uh, many of the sick natives have the um, you know uh, sick people have the way of uh, keeping the book the guru granth sahib in their home in a big way you know and they they do the part of that whole, um, book you know that's a big thing for them but sometimes i've seen that if you don't honor that book like you are drinking you are having alcohol you are just like you know making all the noise and stuff and then suddenly you face a lot of destruction because that book is not being honored you know that book is not given the place of the guru in fact uh, when you do something like that um, sometimes it always helps for a mula native to give the seat to a guru you know that's one thing so like giving the seat to a guru is a simple concept of like uh, you in your altar you might have all the deities and stuff but you can actually place a deity of a guru uh, also in the altar and that will suddenly improve many things for you that is one thing 
Now, the other thing with uh, Mula natives, I always say these is says that uh, you these natives have a past life connection with the goddess or with the mother energy. You know, I'll say that you have a past life uh, energy with a uh, past life connection with goddess Kali, and they'll come back and say that you know what, I had a past life with Krishna, and I was a butcher in a Kali temple. Or something like that, you know, that kind of thing is what they say. I'll just straight up say that you know this works out for them. You know, that kind of thing, and. Um, now, what's again? Mula is also connected with very uh, ancient uh, civilization. Uh, so they will; these are natives who love history. They love the roots, things like that. Uh, and what was interesting is that in India, there is this famous uh, ancient civilization called as the Harappa Mohenjo-daro, or some people uh, call it as the Saraswati civilization. Or there is this Saraswati civilization in which the civilization of Saraswati went uh, around the river Saraswati, and that's what they call. And a lot of the Vedas were supposedly written around that kind of time, you know. And uh, if you that made me look more into Saraswati, and apparently there is one particular mantra of Saraswati in one of the Vedas, um, which they described uh, Saraswati as Prachetayati Ketuna, which, which translates as makes us conscious by constant awakening and imp impulsion. Impulsion means like you are going inward, and then you are awakening something within. So Mula natives for them to meditate upon Saraswati is great. Um, for to definitely for them to meditate upon. In a way in which they are going inside of themselves, you know that is a great way to literally activate the mula energy within them to uproot many things within their own mind and stuff like that. Now, uh, uh, Saraswati is like an Indian concept, but you know, in uh, in Western side, I've seen that these are the natives will be fascinated by ancient cultures like Atlantis. You know, uh, all that they'll be cra crazy about Atlantis. Say you have a planet in mula, you are much more likely as an actress or actor or something like that. You're much more likely to act in a historical kind of epic uh, in which you actually are acting like the queen of Atlantis or something like that, you know, that kind of thing. That kind of thing is very strong. Um, now, Mula is also uh, connected with uh, horses. Uh, that's also a big thing because it's, remember, Sagittarius is half horse, half man. So seeing that these natives might uh, love horses, uh, you know, uh, these natives uh, might have a horse barn. For them, uh, they, will, they will have the knowledge about horses and horses will Spending time with horses can actually help in healing them. This is also an Ashwini theme. Remember, Ashwini is also in trine with uh, Mula. It's also under Ketu Nakshatra. And uh, one thing with the horses is that I've seen um, these natives, uh, you know, uh, might actually experience a lot of uh, restart with horses. This some very big restart energy with horses, you know. Uh, that's a theme with, uh, with Mula also. Uh, now, the last thing I have to say is that uh, it's very really, uh, interesting the omens around uh, you know uh, this particular session. Like for uh, you can say uh, uh, like uh, so, so the uh, usually UG is uh, with us. She is not the lady, right? So some kind of distraction. <laughs> That's one thing you could say. The other thing was that uh, uh, we we talked about many about some book or something like that, uh, something like that. Uh, you know, we talked about Guru Dattatreya stuff. Like that. We talked about temples also. Uh, you know, so all that. So that's one thing. And usually with the Mula, um, I would say that uh, they have some kind of uh, this, what Aditya was describing about going down to the basics and understanding of all the technical knowledge. I've seen uh, sometimes they are associated with uh, associated with uh, airplanes, airports, um, places like that. You know, and uh, and obviously they these natives are extremely psychic, extremely intuitive. Uh, they need to develop, they can actually develop their abilities if they get down to it. You know, that's a very strong thing. And for them, uh, definitely going to very old temples, old gurus, and sometimes these natives might be connected with certain gurus from their past lives very strongly. Uh, that is also one more thing I can say. Uh, but yeah, that's what I have so far. Um, one thing if you notice, Mula is at the beginning part of Sagittarius from Kal Purush Kundali. Right. And if you realize that one has to destroy their samskaras, one has to destroy their relationships, whatever, whether it's children, spouse, mother, father, in order to realize their relationship with God. So the Kali yep. energy that it comes at the first nakshatra of Sagittarius is that it destroys whatever you have known, it's a shock. But then you realize that there's a whole bigger family that you have that you realize with the first nakshatra of mula being there so yeah for sure now this it's a very important point which you mentioned the many times uh, attachment to our parents attachment to children many times attachment to even wealth is one of the biggest uh, things that is preventing in our own spiritual growth you know but the idea is that the attachment destruction of attachment needn't happen in an external fashion 
it can yeah. happen in an internal fashion internal you fashion. can still yeah. have yeah you can still have children you can still have wealth you can still have parents but the destruction can happen in an internal fashion and that's where the kali energy is very effective you know in destroying that attachment uh, so that you can actually deal with this in a very much more intelligent manner you know you needn't and that's a, that's a big thing with uh, mula natives you know they they have to go through this kind of destruction so that they are learning that there is something deep within them that is actually always there within them that the knowledge of the spirit is actually coming through them when they go through these kind of experiences you know but that that the destruction can actually happen in the mental level you know and it's very hard when you go to deeper state of meditation to let go of any kind of attachment because that's when all that attachment becomes very real mm-hmm. but but the biggest thing with the mula is that um, if they are able to even go beyond that fear of oh you know what will i lose my children if i destroy that attachment inside if they if i will i lose my wealth if i destroy that attachment at the mental level guess what there is no destruction that will actually happen it's just like something new will actually come so yeah that's a that's a great point kapil ji yeah for sure the, among the satvik nakshatras exactly yep so you have all that spiritual thing these are the natives who want to go to ancient tribal places and like spread their religion and stuff yeah. like that you know that kind of thing yeah See, one, one thing i want to add uh, what i've seen the most important thing about mula which people have to understand i'll wrap it up because i think a lot of mula natives will feel bound or trapped in the circumstances of their life and they always end up blaming others or the environment but the essence the summary that i want to say about mula is mula is nothing but any planet which comes in mula has a very strong karmic cleansing which is going through from the subconscious the word subconscious is very important for mula because that is where the searching the resolution the deep seated fears phobias anxieties anger management all of that is happening through that the subconscious mind is what is not loving you to you know your conscious mind to act and to overcome many of these fears and these phobias so i have seen a lot of people will benefit if they with mula like neuro linguistic programming transcendental meditation past life regression you know and that's why i see a lot of you know a psychotherapist counselors crisis counselors crisis negotiators that's also anuradha nakshatra right also right crisis counselors yeah. crisis counselors yeah. is there with anuradha but i hear are the people who can keep in a crisis situation they can keep uh, you know the dialogue going is anuradha but at the background you know there is some sort of trying to understand a lot of people are sitting and analyzing say a hostage situation is happening the anuradha is engaging with the hostage yeah. while a team mula people are sitting and trying to see what is happening in their brain what is happening inside the subconscious what is the purpose the root i think that's where they try to analyze and then they know exactly you know what would be their soft target or their soft points with the hostage crisis they understand the hostage they understand there is a weak link in every hostage crisis so the mula will understand that anuradha is engaging them in a dialogue because it's friendliness it's trying to say oh don't do this you know if we keep them engaged so mula the people who really go to the depth and they understand so i think a lot of these fears and the phobias which are there you know anxious anxiety anger management everything i feel is with mula is to do with the subconscious it is that's why i say you have to go deep inside to uproot the the fears the uproot otherwise you will never be able to move forward in the future because your past is haunting you the fears and the phobias of your past is haunting you so what is one of the uh, natural remedies or a resolution to for mula native to get rid of these things what is a, one of the best things they can do see i'll tell you uh, one of the things that i have also said in my classes is typically the cycle is about 6 months to 8 months for somebody to really forgive some you know a person in a situation when there is anger or frustration it takes about 6 to 8 months if it doesn't resolve itself in 6 to 8 months i think it becomes deep seated and deep rooted and that will come to haunt you later in some because it is being held somewhere mm-hmm. so i letting go and also what i feel with mula the best thing is approach is divide and conquer is to divide every problem statement into smaller chunks and then to conquer them 
is to divide or split and then to conquer rather than trying to go and take the whole problem situation or the whole, uh, uh, the bull by the horn i think you have to use a little bit of you know intelligent ways of trying to do that but i think essentially it is all deep rooted subconscious which is blocking them so i think there is a lot of soul searching that needs to be done for people that's one of the things and letting go i think there's nothing more beautiful technique i would want to say for mula natives is to forgive and forget and that's why you see mula is also associated with people who are uh, casting spells and remover of spells exorcism a lot of exorcists you find in mula because something to remove to take away yeah very yeah so you, you need to let go i feel that's the best solution for mula Okay. Yeah, one thing I will just add is that uh, this uh, what Dr. Pai mentioned about the subconscious mind is very really relevant. You know, we don't understand the power of the subconscious mind really. And like, if you look at tenth house from Mula, it's actually Virgo. That's your habits and routines. You know, so like, understand what are the habits you are doing. Try to fix up your habits, right? So that your subconscious programming can happen by habit form formation. You know, and like you work on a habit. You do something for forty days. Guess what? You're doing that for the rest of your life. You know, so that kind of thing is a very powerful way to actually get rid of all the uh, difficult emotions that you have in Mula. You know, that's something I will definitely add on uh, to what Dr. Pai was saying. Because that Ketu is the subconscious mind. Jupiter is being intelligent about exactly. it. So that and uh, actually, there's a very great book. Uh, you know, there's a book called Power of the Subconscious Mind. Uh, you know, so that book is and out there. Isn't the remedy for the nakshatra is directly opposite to it? So for yeah. them would be Mrikshira and Arthra. Yeah, Mrikshira is like uh, yes, Mrikshira is like uh, you know the deer, the searching, the path. You know uh, that is very strong. Mrikshira is the frankincense smell. You know, Mrikshira is the essential oils and smells like that. Yeah. So for these natives, just to have that um, dupe in the morning, that is always a great uh, remedy for them. You know, Arthra is definitely I would say, uh, you know, uh, having that kanti um, uh, with Shiva, God Shiva is great. Uh, Arda is also like you not know, to go into alcoholism and to suicidal tendencies, which is what to drive. But instead, like find a higher version of that, like find a higher way to express that. Intelligence. Like a cigar. <laughs> well, not not really cigar. I would say you know, well, cigar can be one way for sure. <laughs> but you, there are other much more beneficial smokes too. You know, yeah. you could say. Uh, you know, many times these are the natives who are actually calmed down by seeing smoke. I've seen that. And that's one thing. It's like one of those uh, Rahu Ketu kind of connection. They have to see some smoke happening, and then suddenly yeah. things things are calm for them. Like you said, they like doing a lot of incense, arati, and all of yeah. that. So the smoke yeah. itself, it just yeah. brings that essence in. Now, yeah, this now see, uh, incense sticks actually have a lot of uh, lot of secrets if you get into that. You know, like uh, you can there's a lot of um, different that are like you can make incense sticks out of many things. Remember, incense stick is made of sandalwood, typically, right? So that's the chandan smell which you're all used to. But you know, in many different traditions, they use different kind of incense sticks for different kind of benefits. Like actually, you can get these navagra incense sticks. So each graha has their own incense sticks, you know, stuff like that. And then each each, each incense stick will give you different kind of energies and stuff like that also. Yeah. Oh, and and uh, actually, it's um, this reminds me of again, um, Mula native. If they give money, they might not get it back. You know, so if they loan some money, they might not get it because that money is destroyed. That kind of thing can happen. But right. on the other hand, you can actually, uh, if you look at a lot of uh, wealth creating rituals and stuff like that, uh, you know, online, uh, they say like to bury some kind of uh, money under the ground for some time and use that kind of stone or crystal like after two or three months or something like that. So that's also invoking the Mula nakshatra energy, in my opinion. You know. I remember so, Dr. Pai one time giving a remedy. I don't know if it has to do with Mula, where you put gold and silver and some coins with the seed, and you then grow, put plant a tree on it, and you water that tree, and it grows. So it somehow the wealth grows. I remember, I I don't know what video was that, but is that some? Am I on the right track with that? Yeah, you, yeah. I think. Uh, you go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Although with the the field, Dr. Pai has mentioned this before. Uh, you know, uh, one thing I'll add is that you can um, actually put in this. Um, uh, you can have a bag of coins. You know, um, bag of coins like silver coin, you know, or even symbol quarters and you know rupees and stuff like that. Put that. Put some seed, and then uh, the first water you pour in, you have to put it with strong emotion. You know, with that water, so that that seed is connected with that emotion. 
and then that seed is growing when that seed is growing supposedly as long as that seed becomes a big tree right so you always have to get a big tree seed or whatever like an oak tree or something like that and then as long as the tree is alive that you will always have wealth in this life and your next lives right right that's one thing remember uh, something that generation yeah. yeah yeah and i think dr pai has some more additions to that yeah yeah see there's another thing that i've also seen with some traditional astrologers in india if somebody is born in moola i've seen them give them uh, an amulet which is like a, a coin with a hole in it and they wear it as a amulet on their neck have you seen anybody who wears yes, a yes yes that is again the center of the galaxy you know a black thread is passed through it and they wear that so that is again a protective amulet for many people who are born with moola and <clears throat> they do a lot of uh, grah shantis are done um they say you know uh, within you know 13 days or 20 days they have to do 21 days they have to do a shanti if you're born in mula mula nakshatra you know nakshatra shanti puja they say so you know i have seen some of these things also work very well uh, and one more thing what i want to say to you is uh, with mula um you can have some wish uh you know tied you can take a paper roll it uh, tie a knot with a thread like a moola and then put it in a box like a wish and then you know some day you can sit and you can remove something and you can read you know what is there on the wish have you have you heard of those what is those chinese ones crackers with their their rolled yeah, yeah. Uh, fortune, cookie. the fortune cookies yeah, yeah. so something some connection with the moola with fortune cookies okay i definitely seen you know moola having something to do with uh, you know keeping roots in the house or even these paper and tying a couple of papers i've seen binders you know moola is a lot of with binding binding is binding things together like you know right. putting things roots and binding them together the roots are bound yeah. correct the root, articulated roots yeah. mind exact and <clears throat> the same thing what i've seen with uh, many people you might have seen most of the tantrics on i'm talking about more, more of black magicians everything they go to a place where you know you must have seen certain places where a old home or a house with a lot of roots like a banyan tree has grown yes, on the yes they choose such places to go and do their tantric sadhanas uh, say on amavasya days or something you know when there is that becomes more powerful that region is uh, you know mula where a, you know um, a, a place where the roots have grown over and you can definitely tell you roots where there is root problem in the house and because of which there are cracks in the house they have some mula energy problem in their chart definitely you know roots are usually go deep and they they, yeah. they damage of the yeah. house absolutely i've definitely seen you know these are the some of the things i've seen seeing okay. some good teachers in moola too like teachers especially yeah. because of natural teachers yeah jupiter ketu was there and these teachers are very specific they are not like like one of my friend he's he's having lot of planets in moola he will be like when he explains to a students with care and comfort and then oh yes okay so what do you do next okay go ahead okay then what do you think like baby steps like really teaching them how to solve a problem and all and i am like something because i will be just like okay giving them a problem and telling them okay these are the steps and all but he's like the the way of explanation is very unique with the mula i have seen so that's mm. something interesting and mula let me also tell you in the ancient times this nakshatra was associated with prajapati before nairati the initial the the original deity was prajapati and also mool i have seen it is connected to something called as a phenomenon we believe in the hindu text and puranas is pralaya have you heard of pralaya pralaya means yep, this earthquake is ultimate yeah a huge storm and whatever and everything will be you know taken over by water that is moola it's destruction of the final destruction which happens that annihilation happens and uh, you know the water coming in you know taking everything over that's again connected to moola somewhere it's yeah, a moola of the energy then you said dr pai that they would stamp these children would be stamping their foot like very strongly like uh, you know because mola dad nurti they would like stamp cans crush crushing can yeah <laughs> yeah they they drink a can of soda and they just crush it and then they throw it they drink a fruit crush and they just crush it and then throw it 
you can actually see how a person drinks coke or any other drink and see if the you know how they use the can if you see how they crush that you can really see you know what is their nakshatra as well ashlesha has ashlesha and mula yeah mula they like to crush the things before they throw it other people will just throw the the can but some people crush it yeah so the crushing is something i've seen perfect i will break no. the can i i will cut the can i will break the can i will dissect it <laughs> i have got something in mula in my d9 chart so I got... <laughs> okay that makes sense now yeah with what you're doing and everything yeah okay. all right guys so thanks a lot for finally helping me complete this and next one <laughs> don't hold your bad breath audience it could be a while before we see purva shada but we'll try to get that rolling too soon <laughs> all right guys thank you so much thank you, thank you. all right bye, bye.